Shalom Aleichem, and welcome to Sounds of the Shofar, a virtual concert presented by the Marlene Meyerson JCC of Manhattan and Base Manhattan. As we prepare for a Jewish New Year unlike any other in recent memory, I'm thinking of a verse from the Rosh Hashanah liturgy. And may they all form a single band. It can often feel challenging in these most polarizing times to find those moments of aguda echat, of unity. And yet, in this program, you'll hear from rabbis, cantors, comedians, musicians, all from across the Jewish spectrum coming together virtually in a way we probably would not have had we not been stuck in this terrible pandemic. Thank you to everyone who participated in this project, who lent their voice and instrument, their Torah and poetry. May we remember how intertwined our fates are, how much we need each other, and may we nourish our spiritual wellsprings and reserves to tackle whatever this new year has in store for us. May it be some gutens, livracha, for a blessing. Shana tova. We enter the high holidays this year at the time of great uncertainty, uncertainty about the future of our country, uncertainty about the future of our health and our world as we navigate a global pandemic. 
The themes of the high holidays have never been more important than they are now. They invite us to imagine a world that is better than our own, a world that is full of possibility and light, that we can begin again, and that we can turn as individuals and as a country and as a Jewish people to do what is right and good. May these days inspire and uplift you and bring you hope, joy, and inspiration in the coming year. We are in this together, and we will get through this together. Shana Tova. Hello from Harlem. My name is Amichai Laulavi, and I'm wondering, what does hope taste like in 2020? A few years ago, I interviewed my late father and his younger brother about their experiences as prisoners in Buchenwald, the concentration camp. My father was 18 when they were liberated, and his brother was 10 years younger. But what helped you survive day in, day out during those long days and nights, I asked. My father said, my younger brother, I had to make sure he survives. That is what gave me the ability to hope and to continue. My uncle said, every once in a while there was a spoonful of jam. It's really just the tip that we could lick. And that's what gave me hope, waiting for the next one until I finally survived. I'm thinking of that story while well, we are starting a brand new brave year. And Rosh Hashanah brings with this, hopefully, the hope of sweetness. We take a little spoon of honey and we dip an apple or challah. We feed each other 
we nourish our hopes. So none of those dark chapters will revisit anybody on the planet. We will be our brothers and sisters keepers, and we will create together a healthier, happier, sweeter year that tastes like hope. Amen. Sweet New Year. Shana Tova. Good Yontif. Good Yontif. Good Yontif. Good Yor. Good Yor. Good Yor. Good Yor. I wanted to share with you the Goldfarb setting of some choice verses from Psalm 69 that have entered the Yontif liturgy in the form of Ba'ani Tefilati. There's a sort of achingly beautiful simplicity and longing in the words, especially in the Goldfarb setting, the Goldfarb brothers having been unparalleled creators of American Jewish music in the first half of the 20th century. Through their compositions and books, like this one, the Jewish center songster, the Jewish center songster, published in 1949. A rough translation of the text is, and as for me, my prayer is to you, God, at this time of favor, God, with great compassion, answer me, answer me with your salvation. The concept of approaching God at a time of favor with the request of being answered with compassion and salvation, it's such an intimate request. The entire Yontiv, Kriyas HaToyra, grinds to a halt just to express the sentiment three times. As the Ark is opened, in the Goldfarb setting, the request to God, answer me, answer me, is repeated, Aneni, Aneni, which to me is the essence of one of the most important modes of Jewish prayer. Vani de filati lecha noshem and ratzon elokim berov chasnecha.
as we enter into this high holiday period, a high holiday period unlike any other that most of us have ever experienced, of all of the motifs and the themes and the profoundly important framing and meditation that the high holidays usually offers me and all of us and gives us O's, strength and support, of all of those, one particular one is what's on my heart and mind today, and it's the word and theme emet, truth. It appears in the liturgy and the prayers when we describe God, as it were, as emet, on God's word, udvarcha emet. The word emet itself, the Talmudic masters and sages and wisdom teachers of our tradition say the word emet, the word for truth, has within it a story about truth. It's made up of three Hebrew letters, the first middle and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Those three letters, Aleph first, Mem middle, and Tav last, tell a story about truth. The truth is the full story. The beginning, the middle, and the end. When we don't know the end of the story, or remember the beginning of the story, or find ourselves stuck in the middle, like a little point in a pointillist picture, we feel lost, full of suffix, doubt, and uncertainty, and fear. And certainly, as we enter this high holiday period, that's an experience that many of us are having. And the rabbis have a good piece of advice. They further subdivide this little three-letter word into two words. The first and middle letter, Aleph and Mem, form the word aim, mother, and the middle and last letter form the word mate, death. Womb to tomb, the miracle of birth and the finality of death and its inevitability as a cycle of life. They invite us into this moment of being in the middle, of remembering that there will be a cycle. It will become birth again, even as we grieve. The truth of grieving will give birth, as it were, to the truth of rebirth and life being born again. And in both of those images, there's the image of a doula or a midwife saying, breathe. You're in the middle. You're in the middle, breathe. Name the truth of this moment, name the truth of this moment and breathe. Have faith in the cycle turning again at some point and breathe. And so as we prepare for the high holidays, I invite each and every one of us to pause. And like that great shofar, that great ram's horn that we will blow this coming Rosh Hashanah, the cries of the newborn and also our own yearning for more breath, more Merchav, more expansion, I invite you and me and all of us to remember emet, truth, and to breathe. May you have a blessed renewal. May the truth of this moment and your capacity to hold the truth of this moment be expanded. And may, may we all be blessed with a year of health and prosperity. God bless you. Oh
Every era of Rosh Hashanah for the last number of years at BJ, we've been singing this beautiful piyu, this beautiful liturgical poem called Achot Kitana, Little Sister. It was written in 13th century Spain by Avraham Chazan Gerundi and is particularly beloved in Sephardic synagogues. My colleague Rabbi Roli Matalon introduced it to me many years ago and since I learned it, it has made a big imprint on my heart and soul. The poem imagines the people of Israel as the little sister calling out to God to be healed from her illnesses and her tragedies. She so wants to be close to God and to not feel the devastation that life has wrought on her. Seven of the eight verses of the poem and with the word, may the year and its curses come to an end. In the poem, the people of Israel have experienced enough suffering and feel abandoned and are ready to say goodbye to the year and its curses. Sound familiar? So too do we. This has been quite a year. Not only, of course, of the illness and death and devastation of COVID-19, but the pandemic of racism in our country, which persists, the lack of moral leadership and the profound obscuring of the truth. Curses have been plentiful and it is time, really time, to say goodbye to this year. But just like the little sister in the poem, we, the people of Israel, never fail to call out to God. Though we may feel like it, there's a story that tells us to never succumb to faith, faithlessness or despair. Even amidst profound heartache, we aspire for a new story. We believe things can change. With the passing of one year to the next, New possibilities are open. We are strengthened by the potential for change and our chance to begin again. We are invited in, in this most awesome period of Elul and the Yaminoraim to do the work of tshuva and transform our lives and the world. We are not on an endless treadmill of curses. Time and time again, our tradition teaches us there is a way forward. We can believe things will be different. There is hope. And so the poem concludes, be strong and rejoice and you shall ascend to Zion. And he shall declare clear, clear her paths. May the new year and its blessings begin. Tachel shana uvirchoteha. Wishing everyone a Shana Tova Mituka, a sweet and good new year. May the curses of 5780 come to an end. And may the new year bring blessings for each and every one of us, for our country, for Israel, and all the world. Shana Tova. This is a song that my mother wrote when she was a singing teacher for the Workman Circle Schools for the holidays for Rosh Hashanah. The text is by Sheen Sessler and it says, we greet you loud and clear, Lashana Taiva, Happy New Year. Uh, we greet you, uh, the whole, fathers, mothers, the whole generations, we greet you, a good job. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, uh, relatives, friends, uh, the whole generation, Lashana Taiva, good year to everybody. Hagrisen, Eichon Klor, Lashane Teube, Agut Jor. Eba Hagrisen, Eichon Klor, Lashane Teube, Agut Jor. Eba Grisen, Un mir Wünschen, Habe Kinder, Eichon Klor, Lashane Teube, Tick the same.
High Holiday Prayer Book has what is for me a very special verse. We ask God to give tikva tova l'dor shecha, uh, optimistic hope to those who seek you. Hope. That's something we need this year. So much of this year has seemed hopeless. So much has seemed confining and small and it's so long. And when is it going to end? And when is it going to get better? And lots of people, myself included, have sometimes in the course of this year found, uh, found ourselves feeling hopeless and despairing. That's what you need to overcome. And as a religious person, one of the things that the High Holidays does for me is to give me hope. The Jewish people have been through a lot worse than COVID-19. The human race has been through a whole lot worse than COVID-19. We bounced back from the Black Plague and the atomic bomb and the Holocaust, and we're gonna get through this too. We're gonna find tikva tova, optimistic hope. But what does the sentence in the prayer book say? Tikva tova lidor shecha, there should be optimistic hope for those who seek you. In Judaism, God really doesn't do anything all by God's lonesome. It's always with human partnership. God is not just discoverable or, you know, I'm a religious person, I speak about God. Some of you might f find less religious language uh, obvious. That sense of purpose, that sense of order, that sense of goodness doesn't just pop up, you have to seek it. My prayer for myself this year, for you this year, is that you find the strength in yourself to be a seeker. You go out and seek what you need and you will find. Ki tidrushenu, Yimatzelach, Ki Tidrashenu Yimatzelach says, a book way at the end of the Bible in First Chronicles, um, if you seek, it will be found. This reminds me of a passage in the Talmud which you should take to heart. If somebody tells you, I didn't seek, but I found it with no effort at all, don't believe that. If somebody says, I devoted myself to seeking and still I didn't find, don't believe that either. The only thing you should believe is, I sought and I found. And you will. Shana Tova. Haven't the prayers of generations worn you down? This is the opening of Abraham Joshua Heschel's poem, Tshuva, Return, Repentance. He wrote it before the war in Yiddish, and I set it to music, and this is my offering for this high holidays. Haven't feel I stand from Doiris, Dein Drachman is nicht ergreicht. The seed is not so slavus, and their chuka nicht der zalt. Gott, du grasst der Schweiger, and for a strat nicht scheu, schrei. Du bist verbrachen nicht kein Sane. Nicht Father.
This is the place that I now have as a classroom, uh, work center, and a place where I study many rabbinic texts, both contemporary and ancient. I'm in my living room. And New York, that was known as the vibrant place where it was all about the people, all of a sudden is in question. And people are thinking about what it used to be like and when will it be the way it was? Will it ever be the way it was? This reminds me of the important theme of the High Holidays, what we call Zichronos, the concept of memory. In particular, it's about our memory in our relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, with the Holy One, blessed be He. It's about our shared history as a people. But it also, for some t- people, they don't identify with the concept of memory because they say you have to live in the present, you have to live with the reality. But of course, there's no such thing as reality. Reality is in part what we've had in our past to measure up to what we want to be in in the present and in the future. So it takes me back to the Talmud I'll give you an example. The Talmud was written in what's probably some parts of Iraq today. Not a very safe neighborhood, not a place you'd associate with the greatest Talmudic scholarship of all times. And yet, the idea that the Talmud came from a place that is currently war torn is an inspiration to know that that place was a place of great learning for the Jewish people, was a center. I'm not saying we're going to make it a center again, but the idea is we we know it has been, so maybe, maybe it can be in the future redeemed, so to speak. And that's the idea of Zichronot. It's not living in the past in a way that impedes our present reality. It's to the contrary. It's what gives us the ability to dream and to imagine, to make the world a better place. To rectify the world with the knowledge of the divine imperative that we have to transform darkness into light and bitterness into sweetness. Shana Tova.
Hello, hello. Thai Rihiden. I mamish feel like I'm elated. I'm exited. Rosh Hashunah's around the corner. And what better opportunity than to take this moment and I wish you, I get you, I get benched you. I even told my husband, I said, Hershey, you should be moichel for all the stuff that I did to you last year. May you merit another year so I could do even more annoying stuff to you. <laughs> I was laughing, but he didn't find it so funny, never. Anyway, once again, on behalf of myself and my mishpucha, I want to wish the whole oil of happiness, wealthiness, and here's a couple of messages from a few of our fellow Jews. Hi guys, it's Hadassar. I hope you're all having a marvelous day. I'm, I'm having an amazing day myself. Mm, did I make some kreplach and chali? Mm, mm, mm. And a stew. You've never tasted such a stew. Ah, oh, poor Hashem. Anyway, just wanted to pop in and wish you all a happy holidays and a good Yom Tov. I am so sorry I can't be there with you personally at the synagogue. But you know, this COVID thing, I'm not taking any risks. You feel me? Anyway, just stopping in to wish you all a good Gebench Dior. And I want to tell you something. May all your troubles last as long as your resolutions. <laughs> a brach, I tell you. Oh. Привет, guys. It's Natasha Chuka speaking. Oh my God, I just need this. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to like pop in and say like I hope you will have like a Shana Tova Umitsuka and I will be going to synagogue with my dad, you know Papuchka. He came from Moldova, like he never thought like he would be lucky enough to experience like Judaism, but like you know hashtag blessed. Anyway, like make sure you set yourself like realistic goals for the upcoming year. Like honestly, my goal is to accomplish the things that I did not accomplish last year. <laughs> or the year before. Что? Or the year before. Okay, who am I kidding? I'm probably not going to accomplish any goals. So my goal is just to make it through another year without giving anybody too much attitude. Хорошо? Очень хорошо. Anyway, thank you so much for having me and a good gebench your Shana Tova. Well, there you have it. I hope you all have a lichte geyur, a freilich geyur, a simchte geyur. Oh, you know, I was gonna quit all my habits this year. All my bad habits I was gonna quit. But then I remembered, nobody likes a quitter. <laughs> I get yantif and I get the Rosh Hashanah. Shana Tova. I'm Rabbi Elizabeth Bonnie Cohen, and it's a blessing and honor to be invited to share some words of Torah with you to start off your new year. Now, early in the summer, my son, who was not yet three, started talking with me about a neighbor of ours. She is so nice, he said. I agreed. She is so nice. She lets me play in her driveway, he continued. She is very kind. I think she has God inside of her. His words floored me. Now, granted, he is a rabbi's kid, poor soul, but there was no denying the power of his words. He got it. There is God inside of her. Because as mystical Jewish tradition teaches, there are sparks of the divine inside each one of us. I sat down in front of my son and affirmed what he'd said. Everyone is made in God's image, I explained, and we all carry tiny bits of holiness within us. For some, it's easy to see God in them, I continued. Those holy bits shine so brightly that we see them right away, just like in our neighbor. For others, though, their holiness is deeper within, and we have to do the work of looking for the light that they carry. For that, we rely on the holiness in ourselves that longs to be connected that which with, is within others to help us find the godliness inside of them. He looked at me with such intensity as I explained this to him. And when I was done, 
he paused and said, uh-huh, and then ran off to find his toy truck. But I think he got it. And I share this story today because as we begin the new year, we have a new chance to connect with those sacred sparks within ourselves to bring them to the surface and to return to the most holy version of ourselves. We do this when we connect to others genuinely because the holiness in me longs to connect with the holiness in you. And as it does, both are pulled closer and closer to the surface of ourselves. We shine ever more brightly because of it. Now I wanna bless you that this year you allow those divine sparks to surface, inviting them in yourself and in those you encounter. In the season of tshuva, may you return to the godliness within, renewing your most sacred self. And as you do so, may your spirit thrive, and in turn, may it invite the thriving of holiness in all those around you. Shana Tova. As we prepare for Rosh Hashanah, there are many traditions that see this time as a time of fear and uncertainty. God controls our destiny. God is going to decide 
what's going to happen to us in the coming year. But actually, if you look at the liturgy, if you look at the prayers, you'll see that actually the whole story doesn't depend on God. Really, it's in our hands. In the famous prayer, Unetana Tokef, the highlight of the Musaf on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we're told about the Sefer Hazichronot, the book of memories, the book that describes what we did during the course of the year, things that we may not remember, but God remembers. But then we're told about this book of memories. Ume elav yikare. It reads itself. Vichotam yad kol adam bo. And each person's signature is on his or her own book. Ume elav yikare. It reads itself. It's not God who's reading it. It reads itself. Our story, our action, the way we behave during the year, the things that we thought about, the things we were afraid about, our victories and our failures, they read themselves to God. The Chotam Yad Kol Adambo. And it's our signature that is on each of those books. It's our actions. It's the way we lived our lives and the commitments that we made to the future that are going to determine what our next year is going to look like. Of course, Rosh Hashanah is the day in which we coronate God. But Rosh Hashanah is also the day in which we empower ourselves and one another. Shana Tova. Happy New Year.
If we really want to understand the restorative pathway of the High Holidays, we need to take a closer look at something called Teshuva. Think of it this way. As an adult, have you ever gone back to your childhood home, to your parents' house? It can be both a warm and nostalgic experience, but also an eerie one, because we intuitively recognize that so much has changed since we last lived here. The place is the same, so in that sense, we've returned, but we're, we're fundamentally different people, and the old dynamics that were once at play now have an entirely different feel to them. This is Teshuva. We are not the same. We have undergone change. And when we return, we're not returning to what was, but to what can be. There's no time machine for change. And there's no magic wand for forgiveness, either from our fellow person or from the omnipresent. There's only the work. The only way back is forward, and the only way past is through. On this Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, I had holiday season unlike any we've ever experienced in our lives. May we merit to find the strength, courage, and conviction to pursue true teshuvah. Friends, I just, uh, I was reading an article about uh, how, to, how people can work from home more easily. And there's this app that makes office noise and it kind of triggers the brain to get you more productive. There's like clattering machines, people talking, phones ringing. I think this year if people are being home and if you're going to be davening at home or in a much smaller minion, faster minion, truncated service. One very important factor is keep as many background uh, visuals or uh, any other kind of stimuli you can get to get you in the zone. Um, of course, the biggest one being the text-driven music, the nusach, um, you know, <laughs> We say, even during the confessional, we sing. Why? So there's this Hasidish word that the confessional is sad enough. We have to, we always sing. And through the joy of singing, and uh, what, is, what does it say? If the, uh, if the pen is the uh, instrument of the heart, song is the instrument of the soul. Um, so again, please, if you're at home, Try to sing as many of the high holiday melodies you can. And may it be a sweet, blessed new year for everyone. And, uh, Tova.
Elul is a time when I go back to basics that I learned from my grandmother. Well, specifically, she would approach each and every family member to ask for forgiveness. You can just imagine how the fans would flutter and how the whispers would spread. For sure, Doña Catalina must be a sinner. She must be so afraid for her soul. I mean, who asks for forgiveness? Who does that? Undeterred, she kept to her ways to her dying day. And now many years later and many time zones later, I'm reminded by Rinku Sen, a visionary from San Francisco, and the way that we talk about social justice and racial dialogue reminds us that in order to build beloved community, you have to go and you have to come face to face, eyeball to eyeball, and yes, elbow to elbow. Phone, yes, the phone, use the phone. Do not just send a text or an email. Listen and take the time to respond. Even though when you think that your brain is working faster than everyone else in the room, even when you think you have blown past everyone, take the time. When someone says, good morning, Bokar Tov, Bokar Or, how much of your time was wasted by replying? Say thank you, please, excuse me, I'm sorry, I accept. These are the words of the people, and these are the words of the heavens. Voz del cielo, voz del pueblo, voz del cielo. Summer heat is fading, wading into winter. Will fall be fatal? Second wave splinters. Here's a hint of what was and what will be. Who the Fauci knows? Well, studies show. How can we know what we don't even know? So what's your source? COVID's course is coarse, of course, and the media's horse. The force of fake news is fraught. Your vote is sought. Please may it not be for naught. Too many battles fought and lives lost. November 2020, too high a cost to stay astray and pray it away. Meanwhile, we're at home and on the street. Toppling idols, Hamilton beats a Disney treat. History worth remembering, dismembering. Who are we elevating and what's worth saving? Who will live and who will die? Who will get canceled and who will fly high? Whose tweet will last and whose will fade? The past is a shade we can't bear to face. Can't erase the racism of the state, making America great again and again and again and again. For me, a Jew, the new year is brewing. The ram's horn is cooing. What's looming? Still more zooming? Does a shofar even make a sound if it's blasted in a zoom? Can we really be with our loved ones if we're not in the same room? Love looms large. Time to take charge. Join our march. Yes, there were union in the Confederacy. But to Sean Jackson, there's no Jewish conspiracy. It's called white supremacy. And it's a virus. Ignorance pervading the highest office. It's not a muzzle on your orifice. It's a mask. Wear it. I swear it. If we could cancel COVID, calling out Psalms of King David to tap into our changeability, acknowledge the fragility of tranquility with each new phase beginning, on Yom Kippur, there's room for the sinning, if you own it first. Thirst for justice, that's what's in order. Shoulder the boulder of the unknown with each other. Sisters, sibs, and brothers call out to Heavenly Mother. Takia, a blast. Shifarim, a broken past. Terua, tears wailing fast. At last we've arrived. Don your kittel, step inside. Services will begin momentarily.
Shana Tova, never have two words been filled with so much hope for all of us. A good year. It is our fervent wish that this be a Shana Tova for ourselves, for our families, our friends, our city, our country, indeed the whole world. You know, the big message of the high holiday season is that change is possible. Do we really need that message right now? Haven't we all experienced all the change that we can bear? Our yearning for the past is palpable. I walked into the JCC after months of not being here and all I wanted to do was sit at my desk and meet folks on the elevator and welcome people into the JCC, work with our staff and order the same salad that I ordered every day for lunch. But we know now for sure that change is the new normal. But this holiday season reminds us that not only do each of us have the capacity for change, for the good, but that change is baked into the world. That change is good. That living with the understanding that change happens at every moment is a muscle that needs strengthening right now more than ever. Rosh Hashanah comes to tell us we can do better we can be better. We can change. Rosh Hashanah comes to ask us to embrace change. It asks us, what lessons have we learned from this challenging time? What colors look richer? What relationships are more important? In this time when we feel so unable to control our lives, we must hold these competing truths that while so much is out of our hands, we have hands to create beautiful things, to sustain ourselves, to support one another, and to applaud the people who made our lives sustainable these last several months. Shana Tova, from my home to yours, I wish you a year filled with goodness, kindness, health, love, and growth. Oh, <laughs> 